everyone, welcome back to Pwn TV, and in this video, I'm actually going to show you a replay of three different games of Dragon Ball Super that I played on the Octagon Client. And for the sake of time, I'm going to speed up the replay to about 4x uh, whenever possible. I'll reduce the, the speed or rewind the video if we pass something important. But yeah, this is basically just some Dragon Ball Super matches. I'm playing random ass decks. My opponent is also playing random ass decks. And uh, the games were pretty fun, so I thought I would throw them up on my channel. So he opened up with a Planet M2 and a Trunks. Which I thought was interesting, because he didn't know I had Crisis Crusher. I'm sure he wouldn't have charged the M2 if he knew I had that. So I didn't have the early game blue, but that's fine, because Crisis Crusher is black. So I'll do that. He's playing a Legs package in his Harutagarn deck, so it's not quite the same Harutagarn that I'm used to fighting. So he's got the uh, the Minoshas in there, and, uh, and the, the Legs in there to actually kind of thin the deck out. But I think there are better ways to play Harutagarn which I consistently lose to, so you might as well play those those cards. I did tell him at the end of everything what he should cut for uh, for those cards that he's missing when he lost. All right, so he's getting in there, drawing some cards. And he's uh, playing his legs, which gets around Crisis Crusher, so he can swing his legs. Epic victory. Stompy legs. My turn, too. I probably should charge blue here. And I noticed the legs package, so I'm like, I'll charge Bean. I don't need it. He's going to be a bit slower than I'm used to, so that'll be fine. I can swing at his, uh, his dude. Bash. Bash the legs. He's trying to awaken Vados. I'm quite sure that he doesn't really have a choice here, but uh, most players should be very aware that they should not awaken Vados until they're ready to win, because Vados is really strong when she is awakened. If you can keep her from awakening longer, you'll probably win the game, but that's not the case. In this matchup, Hrudegarn has to swing lead to get his effect. Alright, so he didn't do much with his turn, unfortunate. So I'm going to go ahead and swing my critical, dude. He's taking the critical. Okay, drawing a card, swinging his leader, sculpting his hand again. Alright, there's the 10k pump. So he really wants to dig for his cards that he needs, probably a Chain Zeno. I'll charge my 4th energy. It's pretty rough if he hasn't Chain Zenoed by now. Really rough for him. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and grab his red trunks and uh, whatever that other card was. Hoy Emissary of Flame, his super combo, I guess. I don't know. And he keeps the uh, Unyielding Spirit because I have a Borgos in play anyway, so I don't need to take, to take the uh, Unyielding Spirit from him. Borgos punishes him enough if he has that card still, so uh, it's a good card for him to keep if I have a Borgos out. So he's charging that card because he sees the Borgos. We talked about it. So he's just not seeing the cards he needs yet, so he's still trying to sculpt his hand. Five energy in Harutagarn is pretty rough. You really only need four to pop off. So I'm going to go ahead and keep playing. I actually pop off at five and six energy, so let's go. I'm getting towards my power spike, and he just has not seen any cards yet. I'm swinging crit again, so he's just not getting any cards from it. I am bullying his hand as much as I can with his crit engine. He's just not seeing his cabas and his trunks is to actually like really awaken himself early enough. He's just not getting the draw that he needs as a result. Okay, so he's going to try to put me to two. I kind of want to go to two, but I won't. I'll actually super combo with my god super combo card. Since I'm playing a god leader, I can play this. Because it's green leader or god leader for elegant uh, Hellas. Elegant assistance Hellas. Alright, so he's going to see my hand. Pretty obvious choices. Yep, those are the best choices for sure. So he's going to get in there. Double strike me. I'm going to probably... What do I do here? Uh, awaken and draw two cards. One of which was the card that he actually took, the Vegeta. Which was really clutch. Really good top deck there. When I awakened. 
That's why I like to stall Awakening against this leader, because the longer I can stay on Awaken, the better my chances of winning are. Post Sinnoh, post Forcing Hit, Double Strike, etc. Post Awakening, I just get more cards, so he hasn't seen those cards. Pretty epic. Alright, so there's the Vegeta. I'll go to one. I'll untap an energy. Yep. Yes, sir. Getting in there. And it's huge. So he took the triple strike, and I'm double striking him. Beaning to untap. Alright, so he has a handful of cards now from the triple strike Vegeta. And he's gonna try to get out of this damage on the double strike. So he's awakening, which is good. If they awaken defensively with Herudigarn, they're probably losing the game. So he awakened defensively to not die. And I'm just going to keep bashing with my big 20k dudes. Make it a 25, because 25 is the magic number in this game. 25k crit really shreds his hand. I want to kind of swing my uh, my dude, but instead I'll play this guy. Janemba. 20k critical. Coming in again. Alright, so he's going to combo out of it. I should have done 25k here, but he didn't even say no to gates. He just simply comboed. So I'm like, fine, whatever. No combos. Alright, so I'm thinking about swinging this guy, and then he's like, I'll untap and take my turn. Oh shit, my bad. I didn't mean to do that. I meant to say no negates, but I'm like, fine, that's fine. I don't even want to swing this guy anyway, so I just won't. Uh, I'll just stay untapped. I'll untap for the end of turn with the Janemba auto, and I'll untap a red, so I have double red open. So now when he Forcing hits me, he gets to see a hand where I get those two cards back from the last Forcing hit, and I just have a Hellas as well. So he takes the Hellas and he takes the Vegeta, which I don't know why, because uh, the Vegeta is just as good as the other Vegeta now, because I can't actually give it triple strike. I'm at one life. So he comes through and I say negate, minus 10k on your foreseeing hit, and he's like, okay, uh, no combos. And then I say other after image technique, negate again. Well, it's not technically negate, but uh, pump my, uh, my leader and minus 10k again on your foreseeing hit so that stacks since it's until end of turn so minus 20k on his hit is enough to kill the hit and the hit just dies a horrible death and I neg his hand by three cards and I just swing critical to put him to one and then any other swing I have is lethal and that's game GG GG all right so the next deck we play is my uh, Janemba brew that I just came up with and he's playing his uh, his Zamasu his fused Zamasu deck which is, you know, pretty typical, probably Joyous Strike and a bunch of other uh, six-drop dudes in there and five-drop dudes in there. So uh, we were both pretty uh, pretty much the same deck, trying to get to turn five and six to really pop off. That's just my metagame right now. I don't really like playing aggro. I like playing turn five and six plays whenever possible. So when I lose before turn five and six, I get pretty triggered because I typically am not ready to lose before those turns. But aggro is a thing, so... Alright, so he's just going to bash. Uh, I'm going to combo out of it with all of my 10Ks, because this deck has a ton of 10K draw ones in it. So I'll just keep doing that. Charge my Reality Bender Janemba and say go. Burst 2 on the leader means I have to put 2 cards in the drop and then I draw one, so I'll probably mill my, ult my ultimate card in this game, but that's not a big deal. I don't always have that happen. I think I played this deck a little bit differently than I should have, because I probably should have awakened a, lo a lot earlier than I did, but my thought was the longer I can stay at 8 life, the more chance I have of winning against his turn 6 play, because all of his dudes have double strike, and if I'm at 8 life, like, how is he going to kill me, right, on the turn 6? So that's my plan, so I'm just going to keep trying to kill him with my Janemba, my win condition here, and just combo out of whatever damage every time, whenever possible. Alright, so play that guy. 2 energy, drop the uh, crit 20k dude, and he's gonna just, I think he's just taking it. No, he's gonna combo out, okay. Alright. Okie dokie. He does have a god leader, so he's also playing elegant assistance Hellas in his deck, because he's running a god leader. Vados and Fusamasu are both gods. Technically, uh, uh, Vados is an angel in the actual story. But I guess that's technically also a god in their lore. I don't know. They're all gods. Everyone's a god now. Alright, so he's definitely playing a tribal gods deck. Every card he's played other than that Vegito that he tapped for energy is a god. So I'm assuming he's got like a lot of really good god cards in his deck. 
ways to search out god cards, which includes his elegant assistant Celis. Hellas is also a god. Uh, his super combo is a god. And then he probably also has the uh, seven drop uh, Grand uh, Priest, which also just gives you a bunch of energy. It's a god, and it charges all of the gods you have in play as energy, so you get all that as energy. Could help you in some matchups. He may or may not be running it in that. You usually see that card in Beerus decks. In Beerus God Tribal decks, I haven't seen a God Tribal Zamasu yet. But this deck's not too bad. It's just a little bit loose to uh, aggro, I think. And my deck is kind of aggro-y, honestly. I'm turning guys sideways every turn. And when I'm not doing that, I'm negging your hand by one whenever possible. So he's already at one life. I double striked him from three to three to one. So now he can't use any dimensional magics for one life because he just only has the one life. So that's going to not be a play he's able to make, pretty sure. Uh, but, you know, hit, hitting him after the double strike while he's at one, forcing his hand to where he awakens and all that crap while he's at one. I mean, yeah, he has more cards to look at, but he's still awakened defensively, which is the best way to kill someone in this game. If you want to win a game of Dragon Ball Super, you got to try to force them to awaken defensively, and you're probably winning. I mean, it obviously depends on what leader they have, but most leaders don't want to awaken defensively, especially untap energy leaders. They usually want to awaken on their turn. So if you can force that on your turn, then you're in a good spot. Now, his draw two leader probably doesn't matter what turn it awakens on, but I'm still going to awaken him on my turn. That's great. Nice aggro. Double red is out there, so I'll just do a triple red. Why not? I don't want to charge this green card. I don't need to charge the green. I don't have any green to cast, so I might as well not charge green here. Might, might as well just keep charging red and blue and call it a red-blue deck and just use the green cards to combo out to draw more cards. More red and blue cards. Make 25 double strike. He has the negate for that. Well, it would have been 20 double strike with a 5k pump, but he negated. And then 20k uh, crit swing, and he says Senzu Bean and all this other stuff, so... I'll, I'll actually play the Janemba here, and the Janemba is going to come through with the 20k crit, and I'm going to make it 30k. And I think I leave it at 30k? Yep, 30 crit. Uh, 30 crit. So he says, I'm going to go ahead and do a 20k boost, but I also have a Senzu Bean, so that's 40, so that's 5k too much, honestly. Uh, so I asked him about it. He's like, yeah, I, I'll think about it. Let me think about it. See if I can recalculate because I forgot the Senzu Bean. And he's like, nah, I'll do the same thing. All right, so he's still going to over combo just to kind of keep a good hand with four cards. So he wants to win with those four cards. Okay, so he's untapping for his turn six. That's the turn that he usually wins with, his turn six and his turn seven uh, with that leader. And he has the seven energy this turn. So I'm kind of scared, but I have six life, so I'm probably okay. If I was at 4 or 3, I probably would be dead here, but I'm at 6, so I'm pretty good. Plus, I'm an untap leader, so if I have to, I can stand up 2 energy, and then I have all of my 10k draw ones available if I need them. Alright, so he's going to swing his leader, and I'm thinking, uh, no negate, I'll go to 5, and let's see what he does. Let's see if he tries to clear my board or swing at my dude. So then he says, okay, swing at my dude while I'm at 4 life, and I'll say, okay, negate, and I'll also uh, take a life for that. So I have an extra card to look at to pitch, and then I'll choose to pitch that card that I drew out of the life, which just happened to be a 5 energy cost card, and then a Senzu Bean for 6, and that pays for the Beerus. I have to drop up to 6 energy worth of cards when they swing lead with the Beerus card. So that's what I had to do there, and that's what I did. But using the dim Dimension Magic to grab a life card gave me another card to actually think about pitching, which really helped me, honestly, because I don't have 5 blue. I honestly don't even think that Janimba needs to be in this deck. I, I'm never going to have really 5 blue on turn 5 or 6 or 7 because I charge so much red in this deck, so I probably just cut that act, uh, actually out of the deck. Alright, so now I'm awakened, so I have a critical 20k leader. So that hurts. So yeah, 20k critical. And then I got another Janemba. Alright, so now I can mill the opponent 3, and he pretty much has one card left in deck, so it's GG. Definitely GG there. I can just pass turn to him, and he draws his last card, and he decks out as a result. So Zamasu decks out. That's the only way to kill Zamasu, really. Uh, there are a couple other ways, but uh, that's the best way to kill Zamasu, and he decks out. Alright, so we have one other game. So in this game, we're going to be playing Starter Coup, my version 14 Starter Coup versus Broly. And version 1 Starter Coup was actually designed to beat Broly. So version 14 has about half of those cards in it. And those half of those cards 
the half of the deck that I had from version 1 that was anti-Broly is still in the deck, so Broly's going to have a hard matchup half of the time, probably. The other half of this deck has nothing to do with Broly, so, uh, so you know, I don't really... I think it's a pretty fair matchup, honestly. Otherwise, you know, if this was my version 1 starter coup, he would not stand a chance. I literally put 50 anti-Broly guards in it. But in this deck... It's, it's anti-Broly only about halfway, and then the rest is just other meta-breaking stuff. Because it's a control deck, so i got to consider all the meta uh, to play this deck. So that's what I have. So I'm thinking, do I kill his uh, do I kill his one-drop? Which he technically could not have swung last turn. He made a mistake of swinging it. He can't swing it with Crisis Crusher. I'm thinking, you know what, I'll kill it now and see if he has the four-drop. He probably does, and he'll use it. I could have probably sat on the Crisis Crusher a bit longer, but he would have killed it anyway. So I might as well force his hand, you know? So I probably, probably should have waited a turn to see what he did. He probably could have just kept drawing and passing uh, because of the Crisis Crusher. If he didn't have the answer to the Crisis Crusher, I could have probably stolen two or three turns with it. But that's fine. I'm just going to let him do everything he's possibly able to do with that deck and see if I can still win. Alright, so he's kind of making a mistake here, and I tell him about it after he does the play. I'm like, you're doing it wrong because... That deck wants to actually hit me as much as possible, so you want to swing Broly first and then do what you just did. That way you get the extra one life damage, uh, but not necessarily because I have Mafuba open, but I explained to him, like, you got to watch out for Mafuba, but in most cases, that only buys them a turn anyway, so, like, I would still do it. And, uh, yeah, so, like, you should swing first and then play the Paragus, and, and then after that, now I've taken the extra life. Now the Paragus gets sacked. Uh, well, the Paragus plays the uh, field card. The field card gets activated immediately, sacks the Broly immediately, and then you could just go into the, the bigger Broly, which is what he did here. Uh, so the 6-drop Broly's out now, and you got that extra damage from the 4-drop Broly. So very nice. Very smooth way to play Broly. New Broly. And so there you go. I'm at 4. He's at 4. He does the effect to play the 8-drop. Uh, so he has the 8-drop on turn 2, just about like every Broly deck does. It's really strong, but if you have the answer, you have the answer. So I have the answer. So there you go. I can't Mafuba that Broly. I can only Mafuba the early game Broly's. I can't Mafuba the 8-drop or the 6-drop. But I'm not running Mafuba, so it's okay. I'll just negate it with my 1-drop, and that will be fine. Because Broly says you can't negate with 2 cost or more negate cards, and Mafubas are 2 cost, so you can't use it. All right, so we're going to go ahead and tap out and play our three drop. And I'm going to go ahead and say, swing at your dude. And I'm thinking, okay, you probably only have one target, which is Crisis Crusher, but he's actually a three drop. So you actually literally have no targets with Shocking Death Ball here. I didn't even think about that. I know Crisis Crusher, you can pay him for one, but after that, he's a three drop. He's always a three drop. He just costs two less if he's the first battle card. But yeah, I, I forgot about that. But you know, honestly, this is a really looking at it now. It's really strong against Shocking Death Ball. These three battle cards are. So I'm comboing really hard to kill his guy, and I totally forgot that he could just at instant speed in the combo step kill my guy. So he killed my guy and outplayed me. I was gonna I was gonna outplay him if he didn't do that, uh, and I totally forgot he could do that. And I was gonna just wait for him to burn more combo cards and then kill his guy anyway. But he showed me up with that activate battle that he did on his Broly. So I lost that guy, and that could have very well been game, but uh, it turned out that it wasn't game here. Okay, so he's going to attack, and I'm thinking, well, I definitely need to make a better hand than I have here. So I'll pitch some bad cards, draw some better cards, hopefully. So that's what we'll do, and then take two life. Okay, now I get to untap. He doesn't have another play. So it's looking like a pretty fair game still. So I have double blue and double green out. So I charge this, and this is where he makes the mistake. When I turn this guy sideways, he needs to activate battle and kill that Bobbity immediately. He didn't do that, and I was waiting for him to do that. He didn't do it. So then I swung the leader, and then he needs to... And then I, and I get ready to do it here. He says, no negates. I untap, and I'm thinking, okay, now he's definitely got to kill the Bobbity with that Broly, or he's fucked, right? He's fucked. So he still doesn't do it. And I'm like, wow, he just gave me the Broly or the Bobbity twice. Like, if he had killed the, the Bobbity, yes, I could replace it, but I couldn't do what I'm about to do, which is tap out, play the two drop, well, the three drop for two energy, and then activate for two. That's four. I wouldn't have had the energy to do that if I had to play a second Bobbity on this turn. So, yeah. Uh, and I just, kill his, I just kill his big guy. I just straight up say KO your big guy. Android 13 does not care, dude. And so, yeah, he negates again, but again, board state is like, you're not going to get past this with your shocking death balls. Not going to happen. 
This is just such a strong board against Shocking Death Ball. And it gets around Kami because it's only three cards, not four. So you can't blow up the field. Like, there's very few things you can do to interact with my board right now. So he's got to play his six drop again because he can't swing his one drop because I have Crisis Crusher out. So he plays the uh, three drop extra card to grab the six drop and play it. He plays the six drop and swings at my guy. And I'm thinking, okay, maybe he can combo back into the eight, eight drop and then kill my Android 13, but he wasn't able to do it here. So I'm negating. I'm trying to stay at one life. He comes through, and he's like, okay, no combo. And I say, hold on a second, I'm at one because I used Dimension Magic to take a life and untap two. So you probably want to Alpha Strike. Like, not trying to make you second guess your decision, but if I'm at one, you should Alpha Strike always here. Uh, so yeah, he didn't notice that, so I gave him that information. He's like, yes, I definitely want to Alpha Strike. So he Alpha Strikes, and he's at 55, and uh, 55,000 damage, single strike is enough to kill me, but I just so happen to have 60,000 damage in play here when I combo away the Bobbity. I have just enough to get over it. So that's what I do, and I it just instantly charge my fifth energy and play the, the Beerus. And I'm like, yeah, Beerus, okay, yep. Swing at your guy. Okay, you got three cards in hand. What's the chances of you having the eight drop? You got the eight drop? Okay. You had to sack the six drop because of Beerus effect. So now, now what? Now what? <laughs> I guess you have to just go to one life. And so now I'm just going to swing this and stand up some energy. And he's like, negate that. Get that shit out of here. And I'm like, okay, board state still doesn't care. And then I just swing this guy. And I'm thinking, he can probably get over it. And then I'll swing the Goku. And he just didn't have the ability to get over the 20k crit. And also, I kind of juked myself here because the Goku swinging for 5k, getting a 10k cell pump from the combo 10k draw one, drew me into an objection, right? Which really sucks, because I shuffled that away earlier because it sucked then and it sucked now. I wanted a 5k pump so I could say, Sun Goku, pump for 10, grab a 5k off the top of the deck, pump for 5, that's a 20k Goku, that's going to be lethal. But I didn't even need to do that, A, and B, I didn't even get that 5k, so it would have only been a 15k Goku. Like, Senzu Bean, any number of plays he had could have gotten out of that. It would have been really rough for me. Uh, just because I top-decked the objection off of the cell. Like, that sucked. But I didn't even have to make that play. That's the play I would have made. But I didn't even have to make it, so that was great. I was just able to kill him with the Android 13. Uh, he just didn't have any energy open to use his combo cards. He could have only used the 5k to tie the 20, and that's it. He wouldn't have had any way to get any higher. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I got no more video footage apparently to show you, so I'll end the video here. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.